Today we're going to work on playing multiple attack animations. So in the last episode, we got to the point where if we left click or right click, our character plays a single attack animation and using an animation event, we detect when the end of the attack is and the character resets to whatever state it needs. But currently only a single attack animation is playing. We want to create a way of cycling through these attack animations to play our different attack animations like this. So if our attack counter was one, we play this animation. If our attack counter was two, we play this one. So that's the goal for today. We're also going to make it so that after a certain amount of time, our attack counter resets so that we start back at the first attack. So welcome to Barton. My name is Heinrich and let's get into it. Let's go ahead and start off by opening up our weapon script. So scripts, weapons, weapon. Now in here, the first thing we want to do is create a variable to keep track of what the current attack counter is. So let's just go ahead and declare a private int and call it current attack counter. Now we need to go ahead and pass this current attack counter on to our animator, to that counter parameter that we created in the previous episodes. So in our enter function, after we set the active parameter to true, let's go ahead and say anim.setInteger. And the integer we want is counter with a lowercase c. And the value we want to set it to is just our current attack counter. Now currently this isn't going to do anything yet because we're not changing our current attack counter. So what we need to do is decide when do we increase this. Now our attack counter goes from zero to however many attacks we have minus one. So for example, our sword has three attacks. So the attack counter is going to be zero, one, and two. So let's go ahead and increase our current attack counter in the exit function. So after we set the active bool parameter to false, we can say current attack counter plus plus. But now we need a way of knowing how many attacks our weapon has and a way of resetting this back to zero once we've reached that max attack count. So let's come back up to our variables. And at the very top, let's go ahead and create a serialized field, private int, called number of attacks. Now this variable is just sitting here for now, but it's eventually going to move on to the weapon data scriptable object once we go ahead and create that. But for now, let's just get the logic working and then we'll move all that around in a couple of parts when we create the data scriptable object. So with this number of attacks variable, we now have something to compare our current attack counter to, to decide if it needs to be reset. But instead of doing that in our exit function, after we increase the counter, let's go ahead and create a current attack counter property where in the setter for that property, we do this check first. So after our number of attacks variable, let's go ahead and declare a public int. And this time it's going to be current attack counter with a capital C. open up some squiggly brackets. And in here, the first thing we want to say is get. And our get function is just simply going to return the current attack counter. After that, we want to private set. And in here, we're going to have an if statement to determine if we need to set the current attack counter back down to zero. So in here, all we say is if our value, which is the value that we're trying to set current attack counter to is greater than or equal to our number of attacks, then we want to go ahead and set our current attack counter equal to zero. Else, we want to set our current attack counter equal to value. Now we can see that Rider, the IDE that I'm using, is giving me a little squiggly line under the if statement over here. If we go ahead and control full stop on that, we can say that it's telling us that we can convert this to a conditional operator just to simplify things a little bit. So now what it's saying is that current attack counter equals and then if value is greater than number of attacks, it equals zero. And if it's not, then it equals value. So it just cuts down on the number of lines we have a bit. Now, instead of using squiggly brackets, let's go ahead and turn this into an expression body, I think it's called, or is it a statement body? I'm not sure. But anyway, so now we have this current attack counter property. Now to make this work, we just need to remember to come back down to our exit function. And instead of increasing the lowercase c current attack counter, we can increase the uppercase C current attack counter. That's essentially it for the counter. So if we come back to Unity, and we run the game now, you'll see that our attack starts at zero and it is not working because 
we forgot to set the actual number of attacks on the weapon game object. So come to the player, primary weapon, and secondary weapon, because they're both the sword currently. Set the number of attacks equal to three. And now if we run the game, we start with attack one, attack two, and attack three. And it's as simple as that. That's how we cycle through our different attack animations. And now if we had a weapon with five attacks, it just means that our animator is going to look a little bit different. It'll have more animation states running down here. And our number of attacks just needs to be set to the right value. Okay, so that is how we cycle through our attack animations. Now the next thing I want to do is if I attack twice, for example, here, and now I go, go about my business. And now I'm suddenly in a different fight over here and I attack again. I start with the third attack animation after quite some time has passed. I want to make it so that at this point, the attack counter would have reset back down to zero. So I start at the start of this combo. So all we need to do is essentially decide what that time frame is, how long after the last attack do we want to reset the attack counter back down to zero, and then create a timer to reset that counter. Now today, instead of building the timer into the weapon script itself, we're going to create a timer class to take care of some of the repeated stuff that we keep having to write for us. That way in our weapon components that might also rely on some sort of timer, we can just reuse the timer class instead of having to write all the code over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my scripts folder and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder that I'm just going to call Bardent. You can call this whatever you want. Now the idea here, and it's just something that I'm experimenting with and learning a little bit more is I kind of want to create a folder with a bunch of scripts that I can take to different projects. I want to write a timer once now and basically never have to write it again. So I want to build up some classes that do common things that I find I do a lot and just implement it here so that I don't have to keep rewriting it. So inside the Barden folder, I'm actually going to go ahead and create another folder that I'm just going to call utilities. Now, finally, inside of the utilities folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a C sharp class. And this class is simply going to be called timer. Okay, so by the looks of it, it didn't quite generate my namespace the way I wanted to. So I just wanted to be bardent.utilities and not bardent.scripts.bardent.utilities. So let's just delete this. And I think now Ryder is smart enough to realize that this is the namespace I want to use for any other scripts that end up in this folder. But let's talk about the timer class. All it essentially boils down to is I want to do something after a set amount of time. So what we're going to do is we'll be able to start the timer. The timer is then going to tick. And whenever the duration has passed, the timer is going to perform some action. So this is another perfect use case for an event. So to start off with, let's go ahead and declare a private float called start time. So whenever we start the timer, we're going to save that start time in here. Next, we want to create a private float called duration. And this is simply the duration of the timer. Finally, we want one last float called target time. And this is the time against which we're going to check the current time to determine if the duration has passed or not. So anything that is going to use this timer class is going to create an object of the timer and then give it its duration. So let's go ahead and create a constructor that is going to set our duration. So whenever the other class creates the timer object, it has to pass it the duration. So we can just go ahead and say public timer. And then in here, we're going to pass in a float duration. Inside of the constructor, we can then say this dot duration equals duration. So this dot duration refers to this duration, and this duration refers to this duration, or you could just name them different things, but this is okay. So next, what we want is a function that we can call to start our timer. So let's go ahead and create a public void. So it has to be public because other classes are going to be calling it. And we'll just call it start timer. In here, then we're going to start by setting our start time equal to time, which is in our unity engine namespace. So time dot time. And I guess if we wanted to make this less reliant on unity engine, we could make it so that we can pass in the current time over here. 
but I'm just planning on using this in Unity, so we'll leave it like this so there's less to do when using the timer. Next, I wanna go ahead and calculate the target time. So our target time is simply our start time plus our duration. Next, what we want to do is tick our timer so that it can check if the duration has passed. So let's go ahead and say public void, tick. And then in here, all we say is if time dot time, so the current time is greater than or equal to our target time, then we wanna do something. So what do we wanna do? We want to invoke some event. So whatever created this timer object is going to give it a function to call whenever the duration has passed. So let's go ahead and quickly create that event. So at the top, we'll just create a public event and it's going to use the action delegate. And I'm just going to call it on timer done. So then back in our tick function, we can say on timer done, question mark full stop, invoke. So whenever the timer finishes, it's going to call all the functions stored in this on timer done. Now we also wanna make sure that once this has happened, it can't happen again. So we need a way of stopping the timer as well. Let's come back up to our variables and let's just create a private bool called is active. We can then come back down to our tick function. And in here, we'll start by saying, if not is active, then return. So if something tries to tick the timer, but the timer is not active, it's simply going to do nothing. We can then come to our start timer function. And in here we can say is active equals true. And then we can also go ahead and create another function to stop the timer. So we'll say public void stop timer. And in here, all we're going to do is set is active equal to false. So that way, whatever created the timer object can also choose to stop the timer if it wants to stop this event from happening. Then lastly, we just need to make sure that we stop the timer after it has invoked the event. So after on timer done dot invoke, we can say stop timer. And that is basically just a very simple timer class that is going to do something after some duration. And I would just like to thank Dapper Dino on YouTube for this idea. I'll link the video that inspired this in the card at the top right. But yeah, let's go ahead and make use of this timer in our weapon script. So because we wanna make use of this timer and that timer is in the barden.utilities namespace, we first need to come up to our using statements and then say using barden.utilities. Now you probably don't need to do this if you just try and make use of the timer in the code your IDE should be smart enough to do this for you, but it might just be handy to start realizing that this is what's happening so that you know where your code is coming from. Okay, next let's go ahead and create the timer. So underneath the current attack counter, I'm going to create a private timer and I'm simply going to call it attack counter reset timer. And now in our awake function, we can go ahead and create this object. But before we can do that, we need to set our duration. So let's come back up to our variables. And this is another variable that will get moved to our weapon data eventually. But for now, let's just go ahead and declare it underneath our number of attacks. So we have another serialized field, private float this time. And we'll just call it attack, counter, reset, cooldown. So this is how much time needs to pass after the end of an attack before the attack counter gets reset. So with that, we can then come down to our awake function. And after setting all of these references, let's just go ahead and say attack countdown reset timer equals a new timer. And the duration we're gonna pass in is our attack counter reset cooldown. And so with the timer initialized, we now need to go ahead and say, what do we want this timer to do once the duration has passed? So we wanted to reset our current attack counter back down to zero. So let's just go ahead and create a new private void function called reset attack counter. And all this is going to do is say current attack counter, but with the uppercase C equals zero. So now the last thing we need to do is tell our timer to make use of this function. And the best place to do that is in our on enable and on disable functions. So in the on enable, we can say attack counter reset timer dot on timer done 
plus equals reset attack counter. Then we can go ahead and copy this, paste it in our on disable, and then change it from plus equals to minus equals. Okay, so now that we have this timer and we have told it what we want it to do once the duration has passed, we need to go ahead and tell the timer when to start. So I think a sensible place to do that is in our exit function as well. So after we increase our current attack counter, let's go ahead and say attack counter reset timer dot start timer. And so that should work. Now there's one other thing that we need to consider. And that is what if we had an attack animation that is longer than our cooldown? What might happen is we finish an attack, we go into this longer attack, and then before we get to the end of attack, the timer runs out and we reset the attack counter back down to zero, and then we increase the counter. So this might mess up our entire flow. So what we wanna do is whenever the attack starts, let's go ahead and pause that timer to stop it from messing with our attack counter. So in the enter function, let's go ahead and just say attack counter reset timer dot stop timer. And with that, we're ready to go and test it. So let's come back to Unity. And before we run the game, we need to remember to come to our two weapon game objects and set our attack reset cooldown. I'm just gonna set it to three seconds. Let's run the game and see if it works. So if we go ahead and play the first attack animation and then wait three seconds and attack again, I don't think it worked. Why did it not work? Oh, I forgot something very, very important. Okay, let's come back to the scripts. So in our timer class, we need to tick the timer. That doesn't just happen automatically. So because our timer isn't a mono behavior, it is just a normal C-sharp class, we cannot make use of the update function, not directly anyway. So instead what's going to happen is whatever creates the timer object needs to be responsible for ticking it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an update function in our weapon, and that is going to tick our timer. So after our awake function, let's just go ahead and create the update function. And in here, all we're going to say is tack counter reset timer dot tick. Okay, and so with that, everything should now work. Nope. In the exit function, it is start timer. There we go, okay. All right, 10th time's the charm. Let's take a look. So if we attack, I keep forgetting to decrease the timer. There we go, we reset our attack counter. So if we attack again, you can see the same attack animation is played. But if we attack more than once, there we go. So attack one, attack two, attack three, attack one, Reset, attack one, attack two, attack three. Okay, so there we go. We now have a way of cycling through the different attacks a weapon might have. And we also have a way of just resetting the weapon's counter back down to zero after we've left a fight or something like that. So simply just based on a timer. And that is going to do it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at finally attaching our weapon sprites to our weapon. So this is going to include creating our first weapon component and then just going through the logic of getting it to show the right weapon sprite. But that's for the next part. So that's gonna do it for today. Remember that if you want early access to the source code that I'm basing this project off of, it is available to all of my tiers over on Patreon, but it will also be available publicly once this series is finished. And so with that, before I go, I would just like to say thank you to all of my supporters and wonderful people over on Patreon. And a huge special thank you to Cody Lee, SM, Major Sins, Jake Scarupa, Patrick, Itami, Mike Rodriguez, Nathan Ackley, and Christopher Rios for your support on Patreon. You guys are absolute mad lads, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.